So stakes is getting pretty high here in Perry Mason land, and I think old Mr. Mason needs a really stiff drink right about now. I think we all actually need a really stiff drink right about now. And so today, we are gonna be making the martini. The martini's origins are shrouded in mystery, uh, but what we do know is that it was published in two different cocktail guides, both in 1888. So by that year, it was popular enough for two well-known bartenders to have published it. That means that it was part of the culture by then. Uh, the martini has since, if you fast forward from the 1880s to the 1930s, uh, the martini rose to be basically the king of cocktails and um, outshine every other classic cocktail, even to this day, uh, in popularity. That includes the Old Fashioned, the Manhattan, the Sazerac. Nobody can hold a candle to the martini. So no self-respecting speakeasy in the 1930s is going to operate without making a fantastic martini. And that is what we are going to be doing today. Uh, the martini that we're going to be making today is a 1930s style martini. So it's going to be a little bit wetter than what uh, you would normally get today. Uh, instead of like five to one ratios on martinis, uh, back then they did a two to one ratio. Uh, this drink first came to be as a marguerite, but then slowly came to be known as a wet martini. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is just four dashes out of our Japanese bitters dasher of orange bitters. If you have a regular bitters dasher at home and you don't have this lovely piece of equipment, you can just do two dashes. Uh, then we are gonna do one ounce of dry vermouth. And two ounces of gin. And then we're gonna crack our first piece of ice. Maybe crack our second piece as well. Add the rest of our ice into our lovely glass and give it a stir. Then we're just gonna give it a nice strain into our glass and then give it a nice clean orange twist. Nice and clean, just like that. All right, let's give this a taste. Oh, that is great. I mean, it's really no wonder that the martini became such an iconic cocktail. There's just something so simple and clean and yet complex inside that simplicity. The reason why a lot of these very simple cocktails have become so legendary is because you take relatively few ingredients uh, with their own kind of complexities and put them together and then make something that is just so satisfying, um, you know, you're dealing with two different products here. You got your gin, which is uh, you know macerated with botanicals, and you have your vermouth, this dry vermouth that's also macerated with botanicals. And pairing those botanicals together, and then just adding in a citrus element, and then a and a, like a bittering citrus element, and then a citrus element, a fresh citrus uh, citrus element on top of that gives it so many different layers of flavor. It is just fan fantastic. Uh, so there it is, guys. A martini, and I just want to say before we uh, get on to the next cocktail that when you do this, you definitely want to chill your glass. I do not chill glasses when I'm teaching cocktails just so you guys can see what the color of the cocktail is supposed to be, but definitely chill your glass uh, and then make sure that your vermouth is chilled as well so that you get the best possible drink. So there you have it guys, the martini. I hope you guys have really enjoyed making cocktails with us these last couple of episodes. And I just want to remind you to tune in to Perry Mason's Sundays at nine on HBO.